So we're on with lecture 26, where I'm planning now just to complete, even though that 25 ran over, it, uh, I still have a factorization to do for this polynomial, and I still have to tell you what's good about that very particular polynomial, the minus 1, 0, 9, 16, 9, 0, minus 1, and what's better about the one that leads to, so there's, there's the 5, 3 I'm dealing with here, and then the 9, 7, that uh, is even better. Okay. Okay, so this fellow, so this is our P naught, and I factored it. And the remarkable thing is, and that's why it's so good, that's why those particular numbers, I mean, the zeros, you're, everybody remembers the zeros had to be there. Zeros had to be there for the perfect reconstruction part. But now we've got freedom on these other, these nines and minus ones and so forth. But, so we use that freedom to get whole lots, and I've, instead of e to the i omega, e to the j omega, I just wrote z. Uh, so, uh, just to make it simpler, shorter. Uh, so, so z equal minus 1, of course. This is the z plane. And this is the omega circle, you could say. The unit circle, the z equal e to the j omega. So there's the, and here is the big, the, the important point where we're seeing four zeros. So one, two, three, four zeros at, at the big point, z equal minus one. So that z equal minus one is omega equal pi, and that's where we want low pass filters to be zero. Why don't we just say, okay, great, we'll use these coefficients for p naught. We couldn't have more zeros than at, at pi than that gives. Then we couldn't have a. I mean, it has nothing, no, no, no waste as far as zeros at pi. But so why don't we just use this filter as the product filter? Factor it. Do whatever we like. It hasn't got. This requirement satisfied for uh, the, that we needed in the perfect reconstruction. So if we tried to invert stuff here, we would get into IIR filters. Well, big debate, still raging. Actually, I refereed a paper this morning where the guy suggested these filters, and then he said, "Live with IIR in the in the." Uh, uh, in the reconstruction step. Well, the paper had been rejected by the main wavelets journal for that reason, probably. But still, it was some good ideas, so he's rewriting it. Wouldn't that give an infinite delay? To it, it would give an infinite delay if we did it exactly. Uh, so he's, he's uh, it's like Butter, Butterworth filters are the, are the uh, continuous analog, famous. So they're quite efficient, but but you got to deal with infinity somehow. Okay, here we don't. Here we're really staying finite. So we've got this extra factor. So so this has uh, the roots of this. Of course, everybody sees are, are these four, and the roots of this remaining quadratic that we needed to toss in. Or there's one root here, and there's another root here somewhere. Yeah, I could. We could locate them. It's not hard to. If it's a quadratic, we could find its roots for sure. Okay, so now what's the uh, what's the deal? We're going to factor this into we're factoring this whole thing into uh, h naught times an f naught. So we're we'll put whatever zeros we want with h naught, and we put the others with f naught. So uh, what shall we do? Well, we don't want to put all these in H naught and those two bad guys in F naught. That would be that would that would wipe out F naught as as any use at all. So the a natural idea. Well, well, what do you think? 
we could put two of these in two of these zeros in H naught. So, so you see what I mean? We could we could let we could let H naught be. This could have two of the zeros, and then maybe one of the one of the uh, other pair. So. A plus B, Z1, Z, Z inverse, whatever it would be. Uh, I, I should know those numbers anyway, but what the heck. You, you see what I'm saying. You see the options. And then F0 would have the other two zeros of P0. This is, the whole thing is P0. So we've got those four zeros and then the, and then the linear, the one, one more zero, the, the linear term. So that guy times this guy are, are what produces the, the quadratic. I, is that a good idea? Wait, doesn't that divide the doesn't who? That divide, gives us the It does. And so this would, and what, what length would it be? Good, exactly right. What length would it be? Four. So this would produce a 4-4 four, four filter bank, and it would be the Dobashi most famous of all filter banks, of all wavelet constructions. It's what she became famous for, finding these. So she did this balanced factorization where, where one of these went with, with uh, analysis and the other went with synthesis. And that balancing made her filter banks orthogonal orthogonal, but not symmetric. Not symmetric, because this is nice and symmetric. This is a 1-2-1, one, one. but this, this thing is, is somehow, uh, you know, it's a 1-alpha or something. It's, 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 it, it makes it unsymmetric. So this is 4-4 four, four, uh, Dobashi's orthogonal, but non-symmetric. Four four. Okay. So that that's quite an important filter, very important filter, but not symmetric filter. So it doesn't get used in image processing. So what? How shall I? How shall I change things to make it symmetric? Put them both on one side. Put them both on one side. So so that this be the f naught. And you see that's going to give us the one, this gives us with this square there, this is then the one, two, one. And put the whole other factor, minus one, four z inverse, minus z to the minus two, put that, the whole quadratic over on this side, and if we multiply that out, that's what gives us the minus one, two, six, two, minus one. Now, we knew this. You know, we knew that we could, that one factorization of P0 was this. So, again, the new question was, why is this P0 of special interest? And, and what's the answer? Why, why, why this P0 and, so, and not some other numbers? Because, for whatever, for an unexplained but... Uh, perhaps reasonable uh, uh, cause. We like these, we like the fact that it has four zero, we like the fact that it has four, a lot of zeros at minus one. Okay, so if you were Dobashi, what would you do next? Going up the, ro uh, going up the line. What would the next um, P naught be that you would then factor? Okay, so now we're really inventing the whole Dobashi family of, of uh, filters. What would the next P naught be? Let's see. We want six zeros, right? And then we'll then we're going to have to have some loser. Uh, quadratic may not do the job because if if I go up to six zeros and then try with a quadratic, what will happen? I've only increased the degree by two. I, I, I'm popping something new on the ends, but 
Those are zeros. Yeah, they have to be zeros, right? Because because I need zeros in all. So I have to go up by four. That's the thing. I have to go up by four. So the next one, the next will be up to degree 10 with six zeros at minus one, which is pi. And and a fourth degree bad factor. I'll say bad because it it would be we'd be happier if we didn't need it, but we do. Okay. And that would give us uh, that would give us another step up. But let me take the next step because that's where nine seven comes up. The next degree will be fourteen with eight zeros at minus one and a sixth degree bad factor. So let's can we draw the that situation? Uh, let me let me redraw the unit circle and let's just imagine. Could we construct this thing? Well, with a little t you see what what determines what determines the this fourteenth degree polynomial? Just have we got the picture straight? What determines that fourteenth degree polynomial? Well, this is this determines a good bit of it, having eight zeros at minus one leaving us with a sixth degree factor that we, but what determines that? Those, inserting those odd zeros, that's right. The requirement of odd zeros is what determines the remaining factor. It is odd zeros, I mean th these zeros and the next one at minus seven and so forth. Or whatever, wherever it's centered, probably centered up further along. Probably, for, probably the center will be at z to the minus 7 when I'm up to degree 14. Okay, so we could do it. And we could factor it. And that's, that's what the FBI used. I don't think they did the factorization, but <laughs> they used the numbers. And I just got those numbers by email. I could, I could communicate them. Uh, sorry? Yeah? Yeah. To automate, yes. So, what do you want to automate? The construction of P naught, right. and then the factorization, right? Right. Yes. Right. So, these there are nice formulas involving uh, binomial coefficients that, that produce these P naughts because those are nice. Everything's nice about those things. The factors are not so beautiful. Well, we've got eight beautiful factors here, eight times. But then we have six more factors to account for, and probably, let's see, probably there's a couple a couple of real ones, and then there's maybe a, something, and it's complex conjugate, and it's reciprocal, and it's comp something like that. Those are the six factors, six roots, which uh, only uh, math works, uh, you know. Pay them to find those roots, so which they don't actually do. In fact, here's an interesting point: if you give even this polynomial, did I mention this before? Because I, I mean, I'm a fan of MATLAB, but I was disappointed when I took, put in that polynomial, which has six roots. I mean, I mean, it's an expensive program; it can find roots of a degree six polynomial. Well, it didn't find these four roots very well at all. It found four roots that were, that were in a little square around minus one. And vi visibly, not right. I mean, imaginary parts and everything. And then you put the 14th degree one in, and that's you're really missing by uh, a bit. So it shows that uh, the old you know, the classical problem of roots of a polynomial, when you have multiple roots, is uh, very ill-conditioned. I mean, this is low degree. And uh, actually, uh, maybe I just t t t t 
I'll tell you one moment. Uh, I had a really good uh, PhD student uh, a few years ago who uh, computed, uh, right, we, have, we use the formulas and use roots to compute the roots. And when you go up, when you go up higher, higher degree, these roots are like, it seemed like they were lying on a circle. It seemed plausible anyway that they were. And, and these ones, or at least close, very close to a circle. And yes, sure enough, he found the circle that they were approaching and uh, quite beautiful identity. So they're very special polynomials. But what's the 9-7? Just, just tell me how to produce 9-7 out of these 14 roots. So I've got 8 and 6, 14 roots. I'm going to put 9 of them. Uh, no, I, I don't want nine and seven roots. Why do I not want nine and seven roots? Because nine coefficients, I only want nine and seven coefficients. So the degrees are eight and six. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm, I, this, has, this has 15 coefficients, you could say. But degree 14, I'm going to factor into F naught and H naught, and this will be degree eight, and this will be degree six with then with nine and seven coefficients. Right, good. Okay, so what shall we do? What shall F naught be? Yeah, take half of these and give four and two. And now it's clear how we would do the four and two because we want, we, we don't want to separate these four friends, right? Because if we try to separate them, we're going to, we're going to spoil, I mean, by keeping them together, we keep uh, the polynomial real, so it'll have complex pairs as roots, and we even keep it uh, uh, symmetric because it, because we're keeping these with those. But, and then the other one will, the seven will have four roots there and these two roots. Good. So there you go. That's, that's it. And um, so everything is explained. Uh, we can see that there would be formulas, and the book actually gives several uh, equivalent formulas for those p naughts. There won't be formulas for the roots, but we can compute them. We have really not developed very fully why these zeros at pi are desirable. And actually, they are that that comes up also in the in the continuous time situation. So we'll 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 tackle that. Yes. About or I said something about being orthogonal, right? Yeah. What does that mean? That means that the the yes that the that the H naught is the flip, because it's like transpose, of the F naught. So I can tell you, so, so I'll put down what these numbers are. The H, the H naught coefficients happen to be 1 plus root 3, 3 plus root 3, 3 minus root 3, and 1 minus root 3. And the F naught coefficients have them in the opposite order, 1 minus root 3, 3 minus root 3, 3 plus root 3, 1 plus root 3. And if you multiply that polynomial or that, yeah, the polynomial of that coefficient times the one with that coefficient, you'd get my friend P naught again. That, that's, this, those are the, those are the, are the, are the, the two cubics that multiply together to give this guy. And notice, you see how one is the flip of the other? One is not the flip of itself, so they're not symmetric. Bad point for image processing. But one is the flip of the other, so that, so that H naught is the transpose, you could say, of F naught. And we would see similarly that H1 is the transpose of F1. So what does that mean? That means that the, that the, uh, that the analysis bank is the transpose of the synthesis bank which is what orthogonality is, that, that, that analysis times 
synthesis, but but the synthesis is is a transpose, is the transpose of analysis, is the identity. That's orthogonal. That's what orthogonality means. Yeah, so, and this is called spectral factorization in the, in the EE literature. So, so spectral factorization is the, is the factorization where you, where you split these you, you keep the ones in the unit circle on one side, you keep the ones outside the unit circle on the other side. And, uh, and that gives you orthogonality, but it kills, it kills uh, symmetry. Okay, that was a quick response and not full detail. Uh, I, I, I guess I'm ready to tackle, the, uh, sort of a, to pause in the heavy polynomials, factors, numbers everywhere, and just take, uh, take a step back and look at the big picture. Because it's that bigger picture that's uh, important to, to understand where, where wavelets uh, have a part, where, where they're valuable. What is it? What, what is, and, it, and it's associated with this word multi-resolution or the word multi-scale. That, uh, that I want to bring out here. Now, and I may not complete, I won't complete everything that's to be said about uh, wavelets, uh, but the calendar allowed for for that. Okay, multi-scale, multi-resolution. Let me, let me take the word multi-scale first. If I go to a conference about solving problems of physics, and, 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 and I would expect the same in the applications at the lab, uh, the biggest headache in, in, the, in, in the tough problems is wide variety of scales all contributing, which we know in turbulence, for example, which we know is, a, a, a tough problem, and it's a multi-scale problem. We've got big eddies and smaller eddies and smaller eddies, and they're all, and how are they connecting? In physics, uh, uh, in nuclear physics calculations, we've got large uh, distances and we've got minute distances, all sorts of problems are producing this and of course the, the the difficulty is you cannot deal with the fine scale and the coarse scale in the same way if you if you're going to resolve the fine scale then you're and not change your method you, then you're going to do infinite amount of work on the coarse scale that was totally inefficient you, you, everybody understands this difficulty that somehow we need to deal with multi-scale problems, recognizing that uh, we need a multi-scale algorithm. We need an algorithm that, that computes something at the fine scale and, and looks at the correction it produces to the large scale, but some terms are not going to get, are not important, and we got to know which are important and which are not. Okay, that's my sermon on multi-scale. I'm just seeing that everywhere. Okay, and, and multi-resolution is a way of dealing with it. Okay, so what is multi-resolution? Multi-resolution means that we are, really multi-resolution is, so let me, M, multi-resolution, really is somehow taking my function and writing it as a sum of functions at different scales. Maybe I just write it sum f j of x I don't, at scales, say, from zero. Well, in principle, infinity, but in real calculations, not. So what's f j? It's a, it's a function at scale j. It's, it's um, uh, maybe, maybe some... Uh, so there, we might have um, uh, 
So, so I'm, I'm sort of creating things at scale j. So at, at scale j, what do I have? Uh, I have maybe some function. And, and what does it mean to have, I need to distinguish these scales. If it has a 2 to the j t, that, that's something at scale j for me. You see, if, if I have a function of t, a function of 2t, that, that's really what I want you to think about. Is if I graphed a function of time and a function of, two, a function of t and a function of 2t, what, what would the two graphs look like? Suppose, well, let me take a really simple graph for, for my own reason. Suppose the graph is like that. Uh, so this is like... Picking up, it's just a square wave. <laughs> if that's phi of t, what's the graph, say, from 0 to 1? What's the graph of phi of 2t? So much it's, it's, it's scrunched. Scrunched. Right. We don't use that technical term in, in wavelet theory, but that's exactly right. It's scrunched to a half. Right. Compressed or whatever. So it's on the, it's on this finer scale. So this, and if I do it j times, then I've, then I've, uh, I'm at one over two to the j. So this is, and now, so that function, but I'll want that function and its, I want that function and its translates, because because if I if I'm just using these single functions, that won't do. So, so really, I'm. I'm going to build in functions of this. So I have j as a scale index, but I also need a, a k as a shift index because I'm going to, I'll have a, I'll have a, s so fj of x will be the stuff at scale j, which will be a sum over the k index with some coefficients a, j, k, I guess I need. You see, I'm needing two coefficients here. Position, this is, this is, k is giving me somehow the center, the position of the, of the, of the function, and this is giving me the scale. So I, I, my functions have a double index. We're in a, we're in a time, position or time, depending what the, wh whether we're in space or time problem. So we have a sort of a time scale uh, picture where it happens and what scale it's on. And that would be, uh, so th this would be a term at scale j, and now we have another term at scale at, at all, j, at every j, we have, we have these terms. Okay. Hmm. All right, so I, I, I'm still looking at big, trying to look at the big picture here. Well, uh, yeah, yeah. So uh, uh, here is really the big picture. That we, that we want to take, um, we want to take our function and separate it into things at different scales. Let's take that har example. That would that would the har example would be a good one. All right. Just for vectors, because we're doing uh, filter banks did the same for vectors. Do you see that? Do you remember those filter banks? You, you remember that we had you, you, right? Do you remember that we had the this sort of structure? So this th these were something at what a at a at a coarse scale, right? They only used, only had it every 16th gave a number. And this was a little, you know, this was, this was a little, this was, the, so these were, 16 was the, the, the scale there. Here we had an eighth, here we had a fourth, here we had a half. The, the output from a filter bank has this multi-scale aspect. Multi, this is fine scale down to coarse scale. And in continuous time and in our, in, our, in our analysis, we could imagine the thing going forever. 
So that's really what wavelets, continuous time wavelet stuff does. It imagines this infinite sequence of scales to get the function exactly right and uh, and filter banks imagine a sequence of four or five scales to get a vector exactly right we didn't I didn't say how would you invert just if, if you allow me to go back to filter banks for a moment how would you invert this iterated filter bank this tree uh, filter filter tree filter bank tree, how would you invert that? Because this is like the analysis, this is the analysis tree, where we, now we got to the stop, and now, how do I invert that? I'm, I'm reverting to, to the previous lecture, just because, take the top two, right, exactly, that, and then let this guy come in here, and then let this guy add in the new details and add in the new details and you get x back with delay yeah so just so it's clear that iteration is does is does it remains everything remains very easily inverted <coughs> if we can inv if we know how to invert one step then we just just uh, uh, concatenate those right okay so the idea will be in continuous time that the mathematics would allow allows for infinite sequence of scales um, and allows then to deal with functions and uh, uh, so you might say wait a minute let's this is realistic infinite is not realistic but infinite is a very good guide to four I mean in the same way that calculus gives you a very good guide to what happens a little later for a function but a whole you'd need the whole infinite Taylor series to say exactly similarly here um, if we know what's going on with the in continuous time then and we know these wavelets and, 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 and these constructions that are like ideal multi-resolution. Maybe that is, you, you, by using the word ideal, I'm sort of saying not executable because involving infinity, but still very uh, clear uh, as, a, as a model. Yeah. So in a way, the wavelets are ideal filter banks that, where you iterate forever. Yeah. How does the phi relate to anything? That's right. Okay. There's a phi, there's a function phi here, and there's a function w. Okay, so now I'll get down to brass tacks here. We've got two functions in this wavelet world. One is phi. The other is, well, I, I broke new ground in the book by calling it w. Uh, it's the wavelet. And then uh, the uh, usual name has been that, but uh, I'm with most people in the world not too blessed sure how to say that thing. So, and, and, or, or even at a certain age, your eyes on the printed page don't easily distinguish those. So, well, that's my little contribution. To the, to the world. So this is this is called the scaling function, and this has to do with the averages. So this scaling function has, and this is the wavelet. So this scaling function. Now I'll, we've got that inverse thing. Let me let me tell you what are what are phi and w for har for phi and w for har. So the har example, so there are two functions associated with, because we got two channels. We got a low pass and a high pass. So this is sort of going to be a low pass function, and this will be a high pass function that gives us details. So wavelets, scaling functions, this is associated with averages, and wavelets will be associated with details. 
So I didn't, this isn't complete yet here. What I, you said one such fee up here because I just produced it, but actually I ran out of energy there because I only gave you the average part and then there's a, then there's some W's. Okay. Now, so what are they for HAR? Okay, can I just draw, so HAR on zero, 01, the scaling function phi is the box. And the wavelet function for HAR is the alternating box. I'm I'm telling you those in advance of saying what what these mean or where they come from or anything. So I'm 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 uh, quite guilty here. But uh, um, so the idea will be. Yeah, here, here's the idea. I want to represent any function. How? How? What are my basis functions? I'm getting to this word basis. What are my basis functions? It, with har. Okay. What are my basis functions? My basis functions are this box and its shifts. So all the phi of x or t, I'm, I'm usually using t, and its shifts. Do you know, you realize that if I graph phi of t minus 2, here's the graph of phi of t. What's the graph of phi of t minus 2, just so we pin down the role of this, uh, of that index? It's between 2 and 3, right. Here was between 0 and 1. If k is 2, then it shifts it over 2. If k is 1, it shifts it over 1. What I've got now here, and if I take their combinations, what have I, what have I got in this, in this bit? What kind of a function is that? It's a steppy function. It's a, well, if we really gave an accurate description, it's piecewise constant. And where are the breaks? At the integers. It's a function that's, that's uh, steppy. Okay, now I'm going to use, now, what if I, what kind of a function have I got with, uh, uh, with these W's. Now let me put in some BK's, W at T minus K. What, what have I got out of those? I maybe should have made that yellow. W at T minus K. With this W, what is that going to contribute? Well, let me just look over the interval 0, 1. If I combine some multiple of this guy and some multiple of this guy, what can I produce? It would be, yeah, what, what will I get out of that? It, it, yeah, it'll, I could get any, it'll have jumps at a half. Right? It, 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 we're really at multi-resolution here. We're, we're right on the center of idea here. That if I combine some multiple of this and some multiple of this, what can I get? I can get, it'll be piecewise constant, certainly, in that half and that half. But I can adjust it to be anything. I, I got a two-dimensional space. I got one dimension by, by the average and one dimension by the difference. It's, Right? I could, I could combine maybe, you know, some multiple of this, say, say one of that and, and, and two of that, then, then combining those would give me something that went up to three and down to minus one or something. You, 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 right? I, out of, out, this, this tells me the average. And this tells me the detail, which was the horror idea, right? So for functions 
This is those are the two functions that correspond perfectly to Haar, that that uh, that tell me the average and the details. Now, suppose my function has isn't that, but has suppose my function has got more detail in it. Suppose I want suppose my real function has details. Let's say it's got more details. It's it's got a, this is still zero one. But suppose it's got suppose that uh, that guy. How could I produce that function? I need another. What do I need here? Wait a minute. How many? I need another scale. And how many functions at that scale? It won't do if I just. So I'm now. So I, I keep this scale, which will tell me the average. So 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 with some white dot, I would, you know, some 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 average. That's my that's my contribution from this function, and then something from this function. But now, how many more functions, and what functions shall I have? I need. That's right. I'm going to need exactly. I'll need uh, going from zero to one still. I'll want somebody who, who's happy, on just that half, right? So this is just up to a half, and then I think I need a fourth guy. I think this has four degrees of freedom, so I better have four basis functions. And what should be my other basis function? Shift this guy. So that's what these. Now I'm going to put in two to the j there. So j equals zero gave me this. This was j equals zero. This is j equal one, k equals zero. No shift. And then the fourth guy that you're just telling me I get it up there is the same, zero to one, but it's on it's the wavelet on this second half. And that's so that's j equal one half scale. And k equal one, shift one shift. Do you see that I'm I'm up to two indices here? A j that tells me the scale, and a k that tells me the position. I think this is really worth uh, thinking about. And now suppose, let me jump. All right, I'll jump. I'll take only one more jump, and then I'll take an infinite jump. Okay. Suppose my suppose my function is like that, like a staircase. What scale am I on? What basis function should I be using to reproduce that perfectly? I want to keep these. The, the great idea of Multi-resolution. It's hierarchical. I, I'm, I'm, these guys still contribute. There's four of those. What do I? How many more do I need? I need what? Another four? Because I've got eight. Yeah, I've got eight numbers here. Yeah, I think what I'm going to need is a, the next level will be a j equal to 2. So 2 to the j would be 4 then. So that's got me to this 1 quarter scale. And then I think k, I think k could be 0, 1, 2, or 3. It's, it's, what a, it's these guys. And, and it, there's a b, j, k. And there, there I've, now I've, I've broken the bank here. Uh, I, I've got, at, at, at the basic scale, I've got the scaling function and it shifts. At every, at the basic scale and it's all the other scales, I've got the wavelet and it shifts. So I've got whole lots of details. Because that's what was, remember my filter bank had detail, 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 and then one average guy to, to uh, pull it together.
I don't split the base function. Right, the phi. That's right. Yes. Yes. I don't split the base function. Now, what I'm going to say, and I'm not going to achieve it today, is, well, I said that these two functions were the phi, this was the phi, and this was the w for the Haar filter bank. Somehow this phi is associated with the particular numbers one-half, one-half. It comes from those numbers by some magic equation to be seen. And this comes from the numbers one-half minus a half in a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a magic way. What am I trying to say? That if you give me another filter pair, like 5-3, there is some associated with that is some phi of t and some w of t. And phi of t somehow reflects the low-pass part, and w reflects the high-pass part. After, but reflects also the, the infinite number of iterations that are going to enter when we're dealing with functions. Did we, did we see that we really needed to get an actual straight line? Do you see that I'll need all scales? I was able to get this scale with getting a, a, this this uh, staircase with j equals zero one and two, but then if I want to do a, have a finer staircase, I need j equals three, and if I and the limit when I really want to just say okay, suppose my signal is is uh, steadily increasing, uh, then I'm going to need all those scales, and and I could produce the signal out of that. I, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm kind of making the, that jump into continuous time where, where you're asking me to reproduce a function, so you have to allow me infinitely many basis functions to do it. It's like the DFT. If I have an eight-point DFT, you give me eight basis functions, I've got it. But if you give me a function of time and say, produce that exactly, you have to give me an infinite family of uh, an infinite basis to, to get it right. So that'll, this will be the infinite basis, the, the function and all its, the, the scaling function and its shifts, and the wavelet function and its shifts and its rescalings. So it's a kind of an unusual basis. It's, it's got these two um, aspects, the phi's and the w's to it. Yeah. I feel we've covered quite a bit. Are we are we maybe at a at a pause point because I I have more to say about multi resolution where these functions come from. What I I mean the point is they're associated with filters. By that's the magic of this subject is that that uh, if you give me uh, 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 those filters that we constructed they lead to functions phi and w that work in continuous time. And quite remarkable functions. Oh, well, allow me to write down the equation for phi, just so, just so I've written it down. It's the, it's the fundamental equation of the whole subject, of the wavelet subject. I mean, you can do filter banks without it. The FBI happily implemented the 9-7 filter bank but the reason it was good had something to do with the, with the scaling function, phi of t. So here's its equation. Yeah, I can't resist telling it to you. So it involves the low-pass coefficients, and the scaling function appears here, but downsampled, down -sampled, so there's a 2t, and so this is like... There's a downsampling and a convolution, and that does it. And then I, maybe I need a factor two there to to normalize it. Th there is an amazing equation, deserving of our attention next time. Can I just let's just think a little bit about that equation? Um, 
let's see. Suppose uh, suppose I uh, example is har. Then my equation becomes what? Phi of t is two times what's what are the har coefficients? The low pass har coefficients are one half and one half. So they multiply the two to give one and one. So I have phi of two t and phi of two t minus one. That's the har example. So this is the f famous equation that gives the scaling function for har and in general. And would you like to tell me the solution to that equation? We just saw it, right? It's the box. Would you like to tell me the solution to that equation? No. Uh, right. It's, it's fantastic. Look, it's a constant coefficient equation. It involves shifts. I mean, what more could you ask? But it does involve this two scales, 2t two and t. And that changes everything. That really makes that constant coefficient linear. Uh, if I could take the Fourier transform of that equation, you think, oh boy, that can't be that hard. But uh, the two scales uh, makes it makes it a different, different, different features entirely. In this case, we can guess the answer and check it, and it is the box, because this is the first half box, and this is the second half box, and the two half boxes add up to the box. Fine. Would you like to, s how about the one, two, one? Would you like to guess, uh, so next example. Uh, so, so the coefficients are one, two, one, coming from the five, three, coming from the three. This is my final, final, guaranteed final thing. Okay, so one, two, one, I divide by four to make them add to one, and I multiply by two. So, phi of t, so this is example two. Phi of t is, so two times a quarter, a half, phi of two t. And two times two quarters is one, phi of two t minus one, and a half phi of two t minus two. All right. I could leave that as a challenge. I'm inclined to say we worked hard uh, today, and we reached, uh, at least I've written down the equation for the scaling function, which, and just <coughs> said, this is, this is an amazing equation to deal with. And one example we certainly could deal with, and, and I think you could possibly guess the answer to that one, or find it somehow. Can, can I, is that fair? So that's like the homework problem, uh, to solve that equation somehow. Uh, you could take Fourier transform if you like, you could iterate if you like, you could look in the book if you like. Uh, all, you could connect it somehow to this equation. Um, that's not so obvious. Um, but. One way or another, uh, let me start with that example uh, and then uh, move back to the big picture. Uh, so, but, but remember, this was this function was associated with the filter bank, with the filter one two one, or one two one divided by four. Is that fair for a for a challenge for uh, next Thursday? Uh, so I'll still be going on filter banks. Uh, the reasons for zeros at pi, and the uh, applications. I mean, I really, today's lecture, like, threw us into the construction of filter, of filter banks that were invertible and finite length without a lot of, why, why are we doing this? And so let me try to add some of that uh, in the next lecture. Why, why is this whole new world, um, what does it have to contribute?
to, uh, to uh, signal processing. Okay, so for next, next uh, Thursday, we've got some more about wavelets. And then the final days will be about optimization. So simplex method, linear programming, other, other, int other interesting developments. Thanks.